Hello everyone, welcome to Sarushi classes. So let's start reading NCRT Fine Arts Introduction to Indian Culture Chapter 1 of the Class 11. So this chapter tells us about prehistoric rock paintings. So let's start reading. So the distance passed when there was no paper or language or the written word and hence no books or written documents is called prehistory. Remember that was the time when there were no papers, no language, no written word and hence there were no books and no written documents and that's why this period is called as prehistory or we often say it as a pre historic time so how people lived in those times was difficult to summarize until scholars began to discover the places where prehistoric people lived Ex excavation at these places brought to light old tools potteries habitats bones of ancient human beings and animals and drawings on the cave wall so by piercing together by piecing together the information deduced from these objects and the caves drawings scholars have constructed fairly accurate knowledge about what happened and how people lived in the prehistoric time so when the basic needs of food water clothing and shelter were fulfilled by the people people felt the need to express themselves then paintings and drawings were the oldest art forms practiced by the humans being to express themselves using the cave walls as their canvas so here you will see different figures so these were basically the paintings that made by the man during the prehistoric time and he used the walls of the caves as the canvas to draw this or to paint these figures on the wall so why did the prehistoric people draw this picture is the main question so they may have drawn and painted to make these homes more their homes more colorful and beautiful or to keep a visual record of their day-to-day -day lives like some of us who maintain a diary right so this is a similar case uh, like we uh, write a diary about day-to-day -day events or uh, another thing is we decorate our house we hire an interior designers and we decorate our house for that uh, we we paint a wall with different colors or attractive things we keep we make furnitures and things like that so this is similar way basically those were the peoples who like who were living in the caves that's why they used to you know uh, paint uh, the walls of the caves to 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 to, to get the feel of more decorated um, house so the prehistoric period and the early development of the human being is commonly known as the old stone age or the paleolithic age so Prehistoric paintings have been found in many parts of the world and we do not really know if lower Paleolithic people ever produced any art objects. But by the upper Paleolithic times, we see a proliferation of artistic activities around the world. The walls of many caves of this time are full of the finely carved and painted pictures of animals which the cave dwellers hunted and the subject of their drawings were human figures remember the subject of the human uh, subject of the drawings of these peoples were human figures then human activities then geometric designs and symbols so now we are talking basically about the upper paleolithic period where they uh, the subject of their drawing was human figures, human activities, geometric designs and symbols. So now in India, the earliest paintings have been reported from the upper Paleolithic times. Remember in India, the earliest paintings have been reported from the upper Paleolithic times. Now, it is interesting to know that the first discovery of rock paintings was made in India in 1860-768 by an archaeologist Archibald Carley 12 years before the discovery of Altamira in Spain. And Cockburn, Anderson, Mitra and Ghosh were the 
Cockburn, Anderson and Mitra and the Ghosh were the early archaeologists who discovered the large number of sites in Indian subcontinent. Now, remnants of rock paintings have been found on the walls of the caves situated in several districts of Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Bihar. Some of the paintings have been reported from the Kumaon Hills in the Uttarakhand. Also, remember Kumaon Hills in the Uttarakhand. Now, the rock shelters on the banks of River Suyal at Lakhudiyar, about 20 kilometers on the Almora Barachina Road bear these prehistoric paintings. Lakhudiyar literally means one lakh caves. Remember, Lakhudiyar uh, literally means the one lakh caves. And the paintings here can be divided into three categories like man, animal, and the geometric pattern in white, black, and the red ochre. Now, humans are represented in the steak line forms along snouted animals, a fox and a multiple legged lizard are main animal motifs, wavy lines, rectangle fields, geometric designs and groups of the dots can also be seen here. One of the interesting scenes depicted here is of the hand linked dancing human figures and there is some superimposition of painting. Hmm. So this is interesting. The earliest are in the black. Over these are the red ochre painting and the last group comprises white painting. So from Kashmir, two slabs with engravings have been reported and the granite rocks of the Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh provided suitable canvases to the Neolithic men for his painting. Remember, uh, the granite rocks of the Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh provided canvases for Neolithic man for his painting. Now, there are several such sites, but most famous among them are Kupugalu, then Piklihal and Rikalkota. Remember, these three sites are the famous ones, Kupugalu, then Piklihal and the Rikalkota. So, three types of paintings have been reported from here, like painting in the white, then painting in the red ochre over a white background and painting in the red ochre. Three types uh, look painting in the white, then paintings in the red ochre over a white uh, background. Here you will see the white background and here uh, you will see the um, painting in the red uh, ochre color over a white background and uh, there are some paintings which are in the re re red ochre color. Here you will see, uh, here is the background and on this uh, stone walls or cave walls, you can see the paintings were made in the red ochre. So, he, this is the handlings dancing figure. You will see the handlings dancing figure, Lakhudiyar, Uttarakhand. And this is the wavy lines at Lakhudiyar, um, Uttarakhand. Now, these paintings belong to late historical, early historical and the Neolithic period. Now, the subject depicted are bulls. Remember, the subject depicted are bulls, elephants, sambar, gazelles, sheep, goats, horses, stylized humans, tridents, but rarely vegetable motifs. Hmm. Now, the richest paintings are reported from the Vindhya ranges of Madhya Pradesh and their Kaimuran extensions into the Uttar Pradesh. And these hills ranges are full of Paleolithic and the Mesolithic remains and they are also full of forests, wild plants, fruits, streams and creeks. That's a perfect place for Stone Age people to live. Among these, the largest and the most spectacular rock shelter is located in the Vindhya Hills at Bhim Betaka in the Madhya Pradesh and Bhim Betaka is located 45 kilometers south of Bhopal in an area of 10 square kilometers. Having about 800 rock shelters, 500 of which bear paintings. Remember, there were 800 rock shelters and about 500 of which bear paintings. Now, the caves of Bhim Betaka were discovered in 1957-58 by eminent archaeologist V. S. Wakankar and later on the many more were discovered. So, Wakankar uh, spent several years in the surveying these inaccessible hills and jungles to study these paintings. Here is the cave. Mm, here is the cave entrance. So, here you will see 
जायंट केव एंट्रेंस एट द भीम पेटका विच इज इन द मध्य प्रदेश now the themes of the paintings found here are of great variety ranging from mundane events of daily life in those times to the sacred and the royal images so these includes hunting dancing music horse elephant riders animal fighting honey collection decoration of bodies and the other household scene now the rock art of bheem betaka has been classified into various groups on the basis of style techniques and superimposition okay so the drawings and paintings can be categorized into several historic places like period 1 that is upper chalcolithic uh, sorry upper paleolithic then period 2 is mesolithic and the period 3 is chalcolithic remember there were three periods like upper paleolithic then second is mesolithic and third is chalcolithic now after the third period there are four successive period but we will confine ourselves here to only the first three phase phases like these three phases are yes upper paleolithic then mesolithic and then chalcolithic so here you will see another uh, figure so can you figure out what the artist is trying to depict in this painting here you can see here uh, we can see uh, it's a it's a kind of elephant right so here is the elephant and here is the person sitting on the back of elephant he is i think riding on the elephant hmm how the uh, something about the upper paleolithic period so the paintings of the paleolithic phase are linear representations in the green and the dark red of huge animal figures remember now we are talking about upper paleolithic period and the paintings of the upper paleolithic period are linear representations in the green and the dark red of huge animal figures such as bisons elephants tigers rhinos boars besides stick like human figures and a few are wash paintings but mostly they are filled with geometrical patterns and the green paintings are of dancers and the red ones of the hunters remember green paintings are of the dancers you can imagine the green is of dance A, a woman dancing in uh, wearing a green sari you can imagine that so you can relate this green paintings with the dancers and the red ones are the hunters so in the hunting there is a lot of blood shed and the blood is uh, red so you can uh, relate this red color with the hunter so next is we are talking about is the mesolithic period So let's start reading the uh, Mesolithic period. So the largest number of paintings belong to period second, that is Mesolithic period, covers the Mesolithic paintings during this period. The themes multiplied by the paintings are smaller in size. Remember, the theme is here is mm, smaller in size, and hunting scenes are predominant. and the hunting scenes depict the people hunting in a group remember uh, this depicts uh, these scenes depicts the people hunting in a groups armed with the barbed uh, spears and pointing pointing uh, pointed sticks and arrows and the bows so in the some paintings these primitive men are shown with the traps and the snares probably to catch animals and the hunters are shown wearing the simple clothes and ornaments sometimes men have been adorned with elaborate headdresses and sometimes painted with the mask also elephants bison tiger boar deer antelope leopard panther rhinoceros fish frog lizard squirrel and at times birds are also depicted so the mesolithic artists loved to paint animals in some pictures animals are chasing males and in others they are being chased and hunted by males so some of the animal paintings especially in the hunting scenes shows a fear of animals but many other shows a fear of fears a feeling of tenderness and the love for them so there are also a few engravings representing mainly animals 
Though animals were painted in a naturalistic style, humans were depicted only in the stylistic manners and women are painted both in nude and the cloth. So the young and the old equally find pay, place in these paintings and the children are painted running, jumping and playing. So community dances provide a common theme. There are paintings of people gathering fruits or honey from trees and of women grinding and preparing food. Some of the pictures of men, women and children seems to depict a sort of family life and in in uh, many of the rock shelters we find hand prints, first piece prints and dots made by the finger tips. So here you will see one of the few images um, only showing one animal. So here again an image of uh, uh, image of uh, bean betaka caves here you will see the wall of the caves and here you will see the horse only a single animal was painted with a white um, color so next we are going to read about the chalcolithic period that is the third period hmm so this period covers the chalcolithic period and the paintings of this period reveal the association contact and the mutual exchange of requirements of the cave dwellers of this area which settled agriculture communities of the Malwa place means look at this there were three phases first second and third first were the simple one second one was the uh, time when the people in second was the time or you can see there that time you will see the figures or the the paintings were kind of you know uh, the kind of paintings were the people are you know uh, hunting hunting scenes or gathering scenes were there uh, depicted on the walls of uh, caves and this third phase here you will see uh, here uh, you will see the mutual exchange and the uh, association or contact so these things were um, depicted through the paintings so you can see a kind of you know a settled life were started in the third phase or so we can get the idea of this thing by the paintings or by the type of uh, type of paintings so uh, many a time chalcolithic ceramics and the rock paintings we are common motifs for example cross hatch squares lattices pottery and metal tools are also shown but the vividness and the vitality of the earlier period disappeared from various paintings so the artist of Bhim Betaka used many colors including various shades of white yellow orange ochre purple brown green and black but white and red were their favorite colors remember white and the red were their favorite colors we are talking about Bhim Betaka okay so the paints were made by grinding various rocks and the mirrors and they got red so from where they got red color they got red from the hematite known as geru in india and the green came from green variety of stone called chalcedony remember the green color they have got they have got from this stone called chalcedony so white might have been made of out of limestone nowadays also some people uh, use uh, chuna or lime to paint their houses Hmm, in India and the rock of minerals was first ground into the powder and these may uh, then have been mixed with the water and also with some thick or sticky substance such as animal fat or gum or resin from trees. Brushes were made of plant fibers. Remember the brushes were made of plant fibers. What is amazing is that these colors have survived thousands of years of adverse weather conditions and it is believed that the colors have remained intact because of chemical reactions of the oxide present on the surface of rocks hmm now here is the painting showing a man is the man being hunted by the beast so here is the beast and here is the man so this is the painting from beam betaka caves now the artist here made their paintings on the walls and the ceilings of rock shelters some of the paintings are reported from the shelters where people lived but uh, some others were made in the places which do not seem to have been living spaces at all. Perhaps these places have some religious importance. Hmm. So uh, these uh, places were of some religious importance. That's why people were not 
living or you can say they were basically not living spaces but they these places were restricted for religious purposes now some of the most uh, uh, beautiful paintings are very high up on the rock shelters or close to the ceilings of the rock shelters and one may wonder why early human beings chose to paint on a rock in such uncomfortable position the paintings made at these places were perhaps for people to able to notice from them from, notice them from a distance hmm, so this was the main purpose now the paintings though from the remote past did not lack pictorial quality despite various limitations such as acute working conditions inadequate tools materials etc there is a charm of simple rendering of scenes of the environment in which the artist lived and the men shown in them appear adventurous and rejoicing in their lives and the animals are shown more youthful and majestic that perhaps they actually were and the primitive artist seems to possess an interesting passion for storytelling these pictures depict in a dramatic way both men and animals engaged in the struggle for survival in one of the scenes a group of people have been shown hunting a bison in process some injured men are depicted lying scattered on the ground and in other scene another scene an animal is shown in the agony of death and the men are depicted dancing so these kinds of paintings or these kinds of the scenes might have given man a sense of power over the animals he would have made in the open so before moving forward let's have a look at these paintings so here is the hunting scene and here is the dancing scene so here just look at it means here you can see this figure is of horse and here you will see the man sitting on a horse or riding on the horses and there is a kind of bow or a, you can see there is a kind of arrow in the hands of these riders so hunting scenes predominant in the mesolithic period and this is one such scene where a group of people are shown hunting a bison hmm some injured men are depicted lying scattered on the ground and these paintings show mastery in the skill of drawing these forms so here you will see some men are lying on the ground and somewhere on the horses now another scene here is the dancing scene and in this picture uh, hand linked figures here you will see the hand linked figures in the dancing mode are shown in fact this is a recurrent theme and it is also recalls the dancing scheme from the lakudia rock painting found at uttarakhand now uh, this practice is common among the primitive people of today also they engrave on paint on the rock as a part of the rituals they perform at the birth at death and at the coming of the age and at the time of marriage they dance mask during the hunting rites to help them kill animals difficult to find or kills like you know uh, nowadays also jalikattu and the uh, kambala uh, races or kambala came are there so this is just the continuation of these practices we can see then the paintings of individual animals show the mastery of skill of primitive artist in the drawing these forms both the proportion and the tonal effects have been realistically maintained in them and it is interesting to know that at many rock art sites often a new painting is painted on the top of older painting at bhim betaka in some places there are as many as 20 layers of painting one on the top of other why did the artist paint in the same place again and again maybe this was because the artist did not like his creation and painted another painting on the previous one or some of the paintings and places were considered sacred or special or there was because the area may have been used by different generations of people at different times now these prehistoric paintings help us to understand about early human beings and their lifestyles their food habits their daily activities and 
above all they help us to understand their minds the way they thought so prehistoric period remains are a great witness to evolution of human civilization through the numerous rock weapons tools ceramics and the bones more than anything else the rock paintings are the greatest wealth the primitive human beings of the period left behind so with this we have come to an end of this chapter let's have a look of uh, let's have a look at this uh, map this map is basically the map of the indus uh, valley civilization so uh, here you will see a map of india here is the sri lanka and here you will see the nepal so basically indus valley uh, civilization is flourished in this part on the banks of river indus and here you will see the afghanistan so here uh, is, is the present day pakistan so these are the sites uh, let's have a look at these sites one by one here is the srinagar then here is the peshawar here is the manda uh, here is the dadri rupar bhangwanpura banavali kalibangan balu siswal then dali alamgirpur uh, these basically these sites like banavali kalibangan balu are uh, in the india and then this kota diji then chanudaro are in the present day pakistan then uh, this uh, uh, sut koha is, uh, is also in the present day pakistan then this surkotada then rangapur lothal rojri are in the india and then bagatra then daimabad are also in the india so we are going to um, learn about the indus valley uh, civilization or arts of the indus valley civilization in the next chapter so till then uh, do subscribe to our channel and do share these videos with your friends and do hit the like button and do comment uh, below uh, if you have some queries and if you want some improvements you can always comment below and thank you and do watch another videos another courses that we have offered on our channel like tamil nadu board class 11 history or class 12 history of tamil nadu board or class 6 history of ncrts and uh, to continue watching uh, and do enhance your knowledge thank you